There comes a point in every architect's career where Mac just doesn't cut it. Today, we're moving to PC. What's going on team? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. For the last decade, I've been designing, documenting and rendering on a Mac. However, it has just come to the absolute breaking point where the Mac, regardless of how much money you throw at it, just can't handle the best of the best software available on the market. So I partnered with the guys at Make My PC to create the ultimate architect BIM computer. Now, this custom built PC is glorious. It's in a deep, cool, white CH160 case, completely kitted out with white RGBs to look clean, minimalistic and futuristic at the absolute same time. Now, I've been working with Make My PC to create a number of different BIM models that are hopefully suited to everybody out there. From your intro BIM computer, looking at just tailoring architectural documentation and drafting, all the way up to your rendering beasts that make my PC look like a joke. But that's not what you're here for. You're here to find out what I personally put in my own PC and why I moved away from the Mac. So let's take a look at the specs, what everybody is interested in. The PC behind me is obviously custom built and the guys that make my PC did an incredible job. It was delivered in a matter of days and the communication was absolutely perfect. But inside this case, there is some epic stuff. We of course start with a Windows 11 Pro operating system. That's just a given these days. But then we move to an Intel i7 12700K processor which makes sure that I can handle multiple tasks at the same time. And if you don't believe me, I've tested Twinmotion, D5 and Enscape rendering at the same time, and I can still do anything I want in the background. That's obviously complemented with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now I'll open up this PC so you can see the exact sticks we've used for the RAM itself. It's all housed inside the Deepcool CH160 white case. Now, we've opted for this case for a number of reasons. One, you can fit in a bucket load of awesome equipment. Two, it has got the most incredible and versatile handle on top. So I don't know about you guys, but I actually transfer my computers quite a bit from the home to the office, to the remote office, to the head office. I'm constantly moving these PCs around. And even sometimes when I'm going overseas on work trips, I take my PC with me. Now, that's been super convenient and one of my favorite things about the Mac Ultra it's extremely portable. Now, yes, the PC is a little bit bigger, but it isn't gigantically oversized like my original PC was back in the day. This case, you simply grab on the handle and carry it wherever you need to go. So the deep cool case was one of the most critical elements in the entire build process. But obviously when you go to a deep cool case that's this small, this compact, and let's be honest, this beautiful, there are a few little sacrifices you have to make. For instance, the motherboard has to be shrinked and compressed. So we opted for a B760 mini ITX motherboard. Now we've also thrown in one terabyte of SSD storage because I personally don't need that much storage. Everything's pushed to the cloud and only used when it needs to be used. So one terabyte is more than enough for everything that I do personally. And if you're looking to build a drafting computer, an architectural documentation computer, these specs are probably more than enough. You don't need to go above and beyond with the graphics cards. But the graphics cards are the exact reason I've moved away from Mac back to Windows. You see, Mac doesn't have a dedicated graphics card inside. It uses its Apple metal processing power and it just doesn't cut it when you're taking your renders to the next level. Now, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, my work has changed dramatically over the last five years. It's gone from basic renovations to multi-million dollar projects and multi-million dollar projects deserve multi-million dollar renders. And the only way you can do that genuinely is through the power of a Windows machine. So inside this beast is a NVIDIA GeForce 16 gigabyte 570 Ti graphics card. Now this graphics card is the latest from NVIDIA, but it's not the top of the range model. The top of the range focuses on AI implementation, which at the moment I genuinely don't need. The graphics card needs to produce high-end ray tracing and path tracing for twin motion, Lumion, D5 render, and all of these other high-end architectural rendering software. So the 570 Ti was more than sufficient to absolutely hammer home all of the top requirements for every single rendering software out there. Now, obviously there's a 
bit in this computer and to power it all, we needed an 850 watt power bank. But here's where it gets really interesting and where I absolutely fell in love with this computer. I worked hard with the guys that make my PC to make sure it was incredibly quiet. There is nothing worse than sitting in an architectural practice full of high-end rendering computers and architectural desktops that are just so loud you can barely hear yourself think. So this PC, it was critical that it was super quiet when it turned on and when it was running. So to make that happen, we went with a CPU cooler by Assassin X with the RGB lights, of course. Each fan is 120 millimeters wide and we've actually put in an additional three fans just to really make it as quiet as possible. On top of the fact that this case is incredibly small and versatile, it's completely perforated on all of the other sides. So we have a beautiful glass panel to display everything that I'm showcasing here today, but we also have a mesh grid panel on all the other sides. So air can continuously get through on each and every direction, constantly cooling down the system. But that's all well and good. What can this computer actually do that my Mac Studio M1 Ultra can't? Well, the Mac Studio M1 Ultra costs an arm and a leg. It costs significantly more than that PC on the right but it just can't handle the high-end rendering. When I compare ArchiCAD performance, it's very similar. Both computers are able to absolutely destroy ArchiCAD, load times, refresh times, save times, anything you list, both computers will do an incredible job. And if you're looking for the drafting PC, it would be a significantly cheaper investment than what this PC is behind me. So it's the rendering capabilities that really take it to the next level. As architects, we need to be able to sell our stories better than we can sell our plans. And most people can't actually read plans, so we have to be able to sell them through pretty pictures. I tested and compared the examples I already had and I'd already generated on the M1 Ultra. So I used my twin motion path tracing images as a base starting point. And then I also used my Enscape renders from the Mac Studio as a starting point. Now, the one difference here is the Mac Ultra just can't handle D5 render. And D5 render is that next step up. It's the next pinnacle in real-time architectural rendering. So let's start by comparing the pair before we move to the latest and greatest. Twinmotion obviously is one of my favorite rendering platforms. It's simple to use, it's easy to learn, and it's free for most people making under a million US. So it makes it an obvious choice for a lot of people. However, on the Mac Studio, it only runs with ray trace. There is no path trace option. The exported image on your screen right now, directly exported with ray trace in the Mac Studio. The image is really nice. I spent a lot of time on this image to make it exactly what it needed to be. But let's compare that now to what the path tracer option can do without tweaking any options. Now, what I've come to realize is you actually need to tweak quite a lot of options between the ray trace and the path trace to get a good quality render. So this first example comes with a little bit of a caveat. But as you can see, immediately the colors change, the gradient changes, the clarity changes, the reflection, the lighting all become so much clearer. The fact that the colors change in the two scenarios makes it hard to compare. So that's why I wanted to move on to the next example. This external render in front of you right now. It's a conceptual project that I did for a personal development that never went ahead. But there's one thing that starts to pull away from this image and it's the reflections in all the windows. They're blobby, they're disjointed and they just look really fake. Once again, without spending any time and importing it into the Windows machine and running it through the path tracer export, we get this image, which you can see on the reflections of the glass, it is perfectly articulating what is in the real world. So by spending a little bit more time getting the settings right, these images are going to be substantially better on a software that I've absolutely maxed out on the M1 Ultra. So what about Enscape? Enscape was actually an interesting one. Enscape does phenomenally well. And personally, I always thought Enscape produced better renders. So let's take a look at the same example. This Enscape render was produced in a number of seconds. There wasn't much required to actually take it from model to render, which is one of the best things about Enscape, right? So what came as a huge surprise to me was when I imported it into the Windows PC, I didn't actually get much better results compared to that of what I was getting from the M1 Ultra. So with Enscape, it was almost like the software was already at its absolute maximum rendering ability with the M1 Ultra, 
without having to need all of those high-end graphics card performance elements from the PC. So that to me was a huge eye-opener because it meant Enscape, the perfect choice for anybody on a Mac Studio. But what happens when we take it to the next level? What happens when we take it into D5 Render? Now, I'll caveat this again. This is the first time I've used D5 Render and it took me about 10 minutes to comprehend all of the navigation, the UI, understand the software and dive straight in. So first of all, hat off to D5 Render for making an incredibly user-friendly software. The image that D5 was able to export is only exported at 6K resolution. I didn't push it all the way up to the absolute maximum because I wanted to be fair. All the other images were exported at 4K, so 6K was roughly a fair comparison. The image quality itself is phenomenally and vastly better. The fact that somebody with very limited, let's be honest, no experience in D5 is able to produce an image of this caliber in a number of seconds, all thanks to the custom PC, reinforces the fact that the decision to partner with Make My PC to build one of these machines and share it with you guys is exactly what needed to happen. Now, if you're looking to build your very own BIM PC, Make My PC and myself have come together to create a number of different options. They're going to be available through Make My PC's website and also through my website, which will directly link you back to them. Generally speaking, each PC is designed for something specific in the architecture and engineering space. You're gonna have your basic PCs for BIM modeling. Anything architectural, engineering, drafting, and documentation, this PC is perfect. The graphics cards aren't too high end, they're quite tamed, but yet they're extremely quiet and versatile. Moving up the ranks, you'll have a PC just like mine. There's an option in the mini case if you're looking to compact your design and keep it relatively mobile. Now, personally, I love this case. I love the whole concept. It's absolutely incredible. However, there are some downsides that you need to be aware of. In a small compact case, things move, things adjust, and sometimes you might just have to do a little bit of maintenance here and there, especially if you're traveling a lot. That's why there's also the option with the full-blown case. This case fits more, it fits better, and it can cool so much quicker. So if you don't need to save space, if you don't need portability, my recommendation would of course be upgrade to the larger case and utilize that functionality. Last but not least is the absolute beast, maxed out all the way. If you're working on high, high-end architectural projects, I'm talking hospitals, stadiums, skyscrapers, and you're constantly modeling, working in teams, adjusting 3D elements, this is where you really need to be looking if you don't wanna be losing money, waiting for things to load constantly. This is also the beast you're going to be looking at if you're looking to render professional cinema grade videos, if you're running your own rendering business, this is the highest, best package you can get on the market today. Anything below that just won't even compare. My PC, laughable. If you need a PC of this caliber, this is definitely what you should be looking at. Anyway, that's all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed a glimpse into the new PC, which will be featured in so many more of my videos as we dive into new software exclusive on Windows like D5 Render, Lumion, and everything in between. But like I said, that is all for me. So like always, I'll see you next week.